Hello, I'm Katie Manning, and you're listening to The Sirens of Audio, you lucky people. <laughs> Do you all know the real story of the five doctors? Sorry, am I causing a problem? <laughs> Am I making this difficult enough for you? I'm going to make it worse. <laughs> I was a girl who knew exactly how to wear a mini skirt. Always wear knickers to match. You still following? Yes. <laughs> That's made it easier or harder for you? Harder. Good. Right. Um, I love a little gossip. Uh, anyway, so he done it with It's all right. You can take it. <laughs> Barbara is so impressed because her crisps are stale. Down, 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 down. Uh, if, if you are suggesting then that I'm about to cock it. <laughs> no, 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 no. The tears were not from pain. They were from... Yeah, can you imagine how I felt? <laughs> Aren't you lucky you're not my child? <laughs> <laughs> Some, uh, some issues with the uh, quiz, so we're going to delay that for a moment and go straight to the qu- to the Q and A. So, welcome, Katie Manning, back to the stage. Well, I'm the only one standing up here. I think I'm the technical hitch, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. I just heard a little bit. You were talking. I, I'm sorry. I'm so used to having this huge voice. Um, <laughs> I remember work, working in the West End once at a theatre three three doors down from the Apollo where I was appearing. Said, by the way, Katie, could you keep your voice down? We can hear you in the matinee. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. Do you all know the real story of the five doctors? No. no. Yeah, because you know how you... Dallas? Yeah. My font of knowledge here. <laughs> uh, but when they did the five doctors... Um, this may be of interest or not, but I think it's interesting. Um, everyone said, oh, why weren't you in the five doctors? Well, I should have been, but I was living in Australia. I was doing a play over here, and I couldn't go. And Liz said to me, she said, oh, because obviously Tom had said, I'm not doing it. Having worked with Tom now, I can see that happening back then. (laughs) (laughs) And so he refused to do it. So, and Liz and Tom were so fabulous together, you know. Anyway, so Liz said, do you know how hard it was to be given your lines as Joe? And I had to sort of, you know, Sarah Jane them and, and work. So that's why I'm not in the five doctors, because me and Tom... Well, well, I was not available because I was in Australia, and he was not available because he just didn't jolly well want to do it. <laughs> he was in that mode then. Okay. Yeah, very different man now. <laughs> so that's that. So who's Question. got questions okay. I'll come to you, my darlings. <laughs> I love doing this bit. <laughs> Sale of the century. <laughs> Katie, as a forfeit, you can jolly well ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, um, most people ask what your favourite episode is. Do you have a least favourite one that you filmed? Uh, no, I, I can truly say that there were bits in certain episodes where I thought. I do wish they hadn't stayed on the Sea Devil's really tragic flip-flops or uh, what are thongs here. Uh, and it, I felt that when you've got a, 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 an alien 
and it all, you know, because of the budget restrictions, etc. And there's a bit that doesn't work very well. Sorry, am I causing a problem? <laughs> Um, and a bit that was about, you know, it was like, in the, was it, uh, you know the one with the Daleks, the, not the planet of, uh, they are, those tragic old Daleks were like Granny Manning, they were like, uh, uh, and we're going, we're so frightened of them, yeah, really, and I always love it with Unit, because Unit, right, they would not stop firing guns at things that wouldn't die because they were made of freaking metal. You know, oh, well, get the bazookas out, you know. Oh, no, that didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> just, just scrub past that. Uh, anyway, so, but there were always little bits, but when you're doing something, it's such joy. And to be honest, I didn't watch everything after we'd done it because... Um, you know, I was actually working a lot, and uh, but interesting, a little tiny, do you want a little bit of useless information? Yes. 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 On the day, that's all I have, <laughs> um, on the day uh, that my first Doctor Who went out, the terror of the autons, it was, the, it had become the radio and TV times. I'm so old, I remember when it was just the radio times. And on my first performance, you know, first, and it said Doctor Who, Terror of the Autumns, blah, blah, blah. And they, there was never John Pertwee first. They, they didn't do the listing like they do it now, you know. It would be random, you know. Third monster from the left was often had top billing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and if you looked over on the radio page, at exactly the same time as I was going out, it said, the last word, sports report, J.L. Manning. <laughs> My father was upstaging me already. <laughs> so, or did I win that battle? <laughs> uh, anyway, right, who's going to question? Oh, yeah, I thought you were putting no, your question. Right. <laughs> yes, darling. Hello, Katie. Hey, how, sweetheart. How long did it take to have your wonderful hair done? From the time on stuff. You know, that lovely hair Oh, you yeah. mean all the dreadlocks? Yes. That was three weeks sewn together <laughs> that were heavier than my head. I walked out like this. Uh, a long, long time. Um, but it was, I really enjoyed having that, you know, done. But it was so heavy. You know, it really, it, 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 I don't know how I kept my head up, actually. It was basically. so extravagant. It was. It was really cool. I enjoyed it, though. <laughs> right. Hello, sweetheart. Uh, so, I was wondering what your opinion was, and did you enjoy the find of evil? Oh, I, do you know that's one of my favorites? Oh. Yeah. I mean, I really, really love that. I love the fact you saw another side. There were many, many sides to Joe, as you probably, you know, everything from being clumsy to offering her life for the doctors, which was her first, mm. to, you know, never doing what she was told is certainly not a member of unit in her behavior <laughs> <laughs> or uniform um, but uh, in the mind of evil you saw she could also do a little bit of cross she took on a whole male prison that woman <laughs> you know and I don't like guns so I wasn't real happy about that that's one thing I I don't like guns in Doctor Who I have to be honest with you I, 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 I just feel it's not necessary and uh, but there we go. Um, but it was lovely to see Joe actually taking on an entire male prison, you know. And I like actually like that outfit. You know, I wore a lot of things I wasn't really happy with. Uh, but uh, do you know what? People ask about outfits. They think we choose them. Well, some do. I don't. I just wore what I was told including the ever-shrinking suit in the Sea Devils, where they said, we're doing a thing with the Sea Devils, and it was a, a wool... Am I making this difficult enough for you? I'm going to make it worse now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, let's really get the kid right in here. I'll see how good you are. Uh, but in the devils, right, um, I, they said to me, don't get the soup wet. Excuse me? <laughs> and John and I saw that sea do, and John said, oh, let's go have a go at that. 
We were on it. Well, of course, Wall Street. I was like this. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, if you look carefully, when you, if you ever watch something like that, and the buttons were bursting. I mean, I looked like the Incredible Hulk was about to burst out of this ghastly suit. And for those of you who need to know this information, I was a girl who knew exactly how to wear a miniskirt, always wear knickers to match. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, Katie. Hello, sweetie. We can't go on meeting like this. <laughs> I know. We're, we're new here. Um, you, I was just going to ask, um, we've been lucky enough to have you return as Joe a couple of times now, but I was wondering, if given the opportunity, would you ever want to come um, play Irish Wild Time in live action? Uh, on the oh, show? yes. <laughs> oh, lovely, would I? <laughs> would I ever? I love Irish Wild Time. Um, you know, a panda. I, I, and we talk about having the first... Hello, sweetheart. I'm just sat on your knee then. <laughs> um, we talk about, you know, having a female... I'm, I'm, look at it, I'm really doing it. I'm like a dog making his basket. Um, we talk about... You know, we talk about the first time female time lord. How many years has Iris been floating around in the multiverse? in a number 22 Putney bus with a bar in the back and a demented panda. <laughs> About 25 years. So, you know, there's been one out there. And she was a top one, that one. Uh, so, yeah, I'd love to come back. I think it'd be great to have old Granny Jo here suddenly turn into Iris. As we do know, I turn into her very <laughs> and make me own hat, Slobby. I know how to rock a hat with a lot of feathers. Right. Right. Sweetie pie. You still following? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just working that out. Hi, Katie. Um, during the three doctors, um, did you um, did you get to meet William Hartnell? Because I believe he was filmed separately before most of them. No, sadly. Well, I had met him at the BBC studios. <clears throat> but he, I mean, it's actually really touching, I think. I'm, I'm sorry, this is going here. Um, it's really touching. That's made it easier or harder for you? Harder. <laughs> Good. Right. Um, <laughs> Let's see how the edit works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll edit it. <laughs> you can, you can. Um, anyway, uh, it was very touching because there was a man who had actually was the footprint to Doctor Who, the very first person to play it. And he, he actually died very shortly afterwards, as you probably all know. And how lovely it was that this actor got his last hurrah in the character that he had brought into this extraordinary world that we all now are a part of 60 years on. You know, I mean, it it's absolutely touches my heart to think, what a great way, oh gosh, I'd love it if I could go out like that. Can someone fix it? <laughs> yeah. Can I have a quick, like a three minute return to Doctor Who and then I just go, boom. <laughs> <laughs> but it was lovely. Um, and he was a very interesting man. That I can tell you from the, you know, from my short. But I met him when he was doing a different show. Not when he was doing Doctor Who. Pat Trout, do you want any of the stories of the three novels? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You want the gossip? Yeah. <laughs> I love a little gossip. Um, I'm, now I'm moving. <laughs> Aren't you lucky you're not my child? <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> Like a director, <laughs> I've directed um, anyway in the three doctors. Now, you'd think that John Pertwee did spend his life going from uh, you know, doing cabaret oh, yeah. and all that kind of thing. Radio. Radio, yeah, we get there, but he started in circus, cabaret, you know, uh, music hall. All that kind of thing, which is why he always made sure he got his money's worth of everything. Because in the old days, if you worked in music hall and things, by the time you came off stage, the guy who took the money at the box office had already gone. <laughs> so that's why actors now 
are so determined to make sure they get their money. Anyway, so John had had this extraordinary life. He'd even been a... Who's the actor, American actor? He, owned a, he, he was his double. Danny Kaye. Danny Kaye. He was Danny Kaye's double. Uh, anyway, so he done it. It's all right, we can take it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's my agent, no. Um, <laughs> anyway, so he'd, he'd already kind of had this extraordinary career. I grew up hearing him on the radio and actually mimicking him. Yeah, because I was that child. Because I couldn't see, I just listened to voices and did them. We, you know, I mean, I did Popeye at six, and my parents thought, my goodness, this child is going to need therapy. <laughs> uh, imagine a six-year-old going, I'm Popeye, this, you know, not good. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it, it, you would imagine that he would be a very free kind of actor, that he would be able to just float into anything, because that's what. Interestingly enough, now, Pat Troughton was a theatre actor for, first and foremost. And although John was known amongst older people in radio, he wasn't really known um, in the, the kind of television world. He'd also done the carry-on films. But it was sort of different. He wasn't known. That, so this was a very important job for John, which I'll get into later if you want. But uh, Pat Trout, of course, being a theatre actor, you would have thought that he was very script-bound. Yeah. Nah. It was the complete opposite. So there was about, I would say, 15 minutes where they were kind of vying with each other. You know what I mean? A lot of this going on. And, you know, their territory. Because this had never been done before. They, you know, I mean, and so they were kind of just a little bit territorial to begin with. And when that happens, I get the giggles. I, that's terrible. When anything serious like that is going on around, I just giggle. I don't know why. It just... <laughs> anyway, so they are kind of just buying each other off a bit. And eventually, you know, Pat would say his line. And John would turn around and he'd say, well, I go. And Pat said, well, aren't you going to respond? He said... I will when I know exactly what you're going to say. So it worked completely in the opposite way, but within about 15 minutes, you saw these two extraordinary actors absolutely just mould so happily into these two roles. It was, it was absolutely glorious. And then later on, I meet Pat Troughton's son and me, and he wants to marry me on another planet. This is called sci-fi, honey. <laughs> um, but it was fascinating doing that. Right, another question. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that Jodie wasn't present in the scene for film, your cameo for Power of the Doctor, but she turned up afterwards. What was it like meeting her? Judy? Oh, there's, I, I've got some lovely pictures, which I should put up on Twitter. I don't know why, but we, we, there's pictures of us just shrieking with laughter. I'm back. Um, <laughs> just shrieking with laughter. She is absolutely a delight. You know, she's a really lovely, and I thought she did a, a, a marvellous job. And I will say, that I felt it, the best I ever saw Jodie was when they allowed her to calm down right at the very end, when her character just stopped being quite so wonderfully manic. Brilliantly, I don't mean that in a, in, in a, in a way, it was absolutely right. But do you all remember towards the end of her, where she just kind of slowed down a bit? And I thought that was absolutely magnificent, you know. It really worked beautifully. Wonderful, you know, she was great. And she was fun. She was a lot of fun, absolutely. So, yeah. Anybody else? Oh, listen, I mean, honestly, I'm working for my birthday, aren't I? I know I don't have to do this, but I just like hanging out with you. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello. I'm about to sit on your knee. No. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you had any um, interesting stories about your work at Big Finish and specifically Tim Trailer. 
How many stories would you like about Big Finish? <laughs> so many years and so many characters. Um, as I say, I've just finished uh, three books uh, in which I do 50 voices. Do you want to hear my depressed vending machine? I said to Paul Mars afterwards, thanks a lot. After 50 voices, you walk out and you go to get on a bus and you suddenly think, I have no idea what my voice is. <laughs> you know, you go through the whole... My, my depressed vending machine is called Barbara. And Barbara is so depressed because her crisps are stale. Anyway, that goes on a long time. Uh, and so when you've done 50 voices and things like that, and then I did my own play, Not a Well Woman, which has 26 voices. Um, but with Big Finish, I've done Dorian Gray, I've done, not many people know that I was in Dracula playing the nun, very well time past, I felt, um, and the bar lady. And things like, so Big Finish gives this wonderful opportunity to kind of exercise. And also they use me because it means I'm very cheap because they don't have to get other actors in. Well, think about it, it's a really good idea. Get Katie and that will be one actor we pay. Um, you also played an ice warrior for, with uh, Mike yes, Trout, did. didn't you? Well, yeah. Nick Briggs said the reason we'll get Katie to do this is because we won't have to use the voice machine on her. <laughs> Nick is I'm not sure whether to take that as a compliment or not. <laughs> um, they're the most wonderful company to work for. Um, you know, how amazing that uh, Jason Hay Eric. I was at the wedding, darling. Oh, can I tell you a little side thing? There's always something else in my head. Um, Jason, hey, Barry, right? Married an Australian girl. Now, when I was directing a musical called Eureka, right in its early stages, uh, which I, then, own, I own the musical. Huh? I have the musical on CD. It's wonderful. Right. Well, I played the six year old on the CD, I do the boy. Just uh, if it's the, the first one, yeah, not, uh, yeah. yeah. I played Barry's grandson. That's scary thought, isn't it? <laughs> and you might be able to say, I've got sixpence in my pocket. You know, and there's my, my partner standing next to me. Anyway, so, uh, when I was doing this, and Jason had had lots of girlfriends one day or another, I said to him, you know, darling, it's time you found the right person. You can't just keep, you know, playing the field. Eventually, I went to a party, and he said, Katie, I want you to come and meet my girlfriend. Unbeknownst to me, this girl who I had in the staged reading of Eureka, I thought was absolutely fabulous. She was fresh out of Whopper, I think she was, and I thought she was perfect for this part. And the producers disagreed. They said, oh, no, she's too inexperienced. I said, nonsense. You've got to start somewhere. This girl has got everything we want. So I fought in this girl's corner really, really hard. So when Jason said to me, Here's, meet, meet this, uh, this, my, my fiancé, and I woke up and she said, Katie Manning. I went, yes. <laughs> she said, and I went, oh, my goodness. That was the girl I championed. And when I was directing, I thought, thank goodness for that. Can you imagine? It might be really vile. <laughs> so that's why I'm still working for the guy. No, but he started a company when there was no Doctor Who. And that was such a clever. He now has a publishing company, an agency. Uh, he backs theatre. You know, he's just gone from strength to strength. And, you know, mm. you're sitting there and suddenly I'm doing a two-hander with Sir Derek Jacobi. And we're all, it's just one. And it means you can mix all the doctors and play with the timelines. And, you know, it's really a brilliant company. Audio is terrific too because it means you get all the magic of all these incredible stories written by great writers, amazing actors every doctor and things that aren't even doctor who related 
So you've got a whole world of being able to sit down and listen to these fantastic stories. And, you know, it, it, we all love working for Big Finish. Can I just jump on that? Because you mentioned, mentioned Sir Derek. The, that story that you did a two-hander with him, it was so gut-wrenchingly emotional. He was doing horrible things to you. I know. What are you that? <laughs> I know. I was being, you know, terrible things happened by some dear, sweet Sir Derek Jacobi. Not. Um, <laughs> It was amazing because he sits, he's sitting there all cool and calm and collected. I dealt with many masters in my time, so to speak. And, you know, I, I, was, I was the first to actually be un, not to be hypnotized. You know, he hypnotized me once and Joe, it ain't never going to happen again. There's a, quite a long scene where she, no, you're not going to do this to me again. Um, he is. Such an extraordinary actor to work with, you know, and the, the feeling of menace. And I'm the kind of actor I I feel it, honey. And I was traumatized doing it in a way, you know, I really, really was. Um, but as I say, we worked with so many extraordinary actors. We we're so lucky. And uh, but as I say, the man left without a bead of sweat. By this time, I honestly could have been institutionalised after such a mess. You know? Yeah, I know you've done a lot for Big Finish, and all of your performances are great. But that one in particular was extraordinarily powerful. So the War Master—I can't remember the name of the story. Something oh, in the night—I nice, can't remember. Uh, but if you seek that out, you're in for it. You're and the other sure. one was when Joe comes back a couple of times with New Unit, and there was one—is it the death of? Joe Jones or something. She once again offers her life to save the world. Uh, but it was lovely once again working with, um, you know, Osborne and, you know, Kate and all the rest of it, you know, um, because Ingrid it was terrific. And I thought they were so funny when they go back into the Sea Devils. And Joe goes to broker the peace with the Sea Devils that the Doctor never quite finished. And it was her determination she wanted to go and break of that. But since I've come back in a short film, Saving Baby Sea Devils in one of the box sets. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that the cutest thing? <laughs> I mean, if everybody doesn't want one of those, I want one. <laughs> I think they're adorable. Um, but it, yeah, it's amazing what the, the whole world of Doctor Who. And I remember many years ago going back on to its 50th? 50th anniversary. And I went to do a television, a live television from uh, BBC Worldwide. And it goes out live. Just before I went on, this, this girl comes up and she said, oh, by the way, she said, the interviewer, you know, doesn't think much of Doctor Who. I thought, oh, great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be a fun interview, isn't it? <laughs> he doesn't like me before I've even started, you know, all the show. So I thought, okay, so I go on. And he does, you know, that usual thing where we all go, oh, please, get a grip, give it a rest. Albert, you know, oh, the wobbly sets. And he showed this way. I said, back then, when you were watching it, you wouldn't have noticed that because you hadn't experienced anything else. Duh. Uh, <laughs> you know, the Avengers, you watch it, there's all sorts, you know, booms coming. We didn't know then what we kind of never compare watching an old show with a modern show. Take it as it, even the clothes and somebody on a telephone, you know, that sort of stuff. But um, anyway, so he sat there and he banged on about this and this is going out BBC World. And I looked at him and after he finished, I said, so why am I here celebrating 50 years? <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Oh, oh, you get busy now. <laughs> Should I go to? Oh, um, and ready, kid. <laughs> One of your earlier stories working with um, Lisa Bauman with the um, Bernie Summerfield. What was that like? That would be one of your first. Stories. It was the first one. And that Great. was as Iris, wasn't it? Yes. The Plague Herds of Excellus, I think it was called. Oh, there you go. 
Uh, quick story. There's always a story, isn't there? I can't just sort of say, yes, that was lovely. Um, <laughs> because it was It said, I didn't know. i just come back. I didn't really know. I knew, didn't know who I was. What I didn't know Paul Mars. I knew nothing. I lived in Australia, you know? And uh, so <laughs> I, uh, they, they, you know, I said to um, Gary Russell, you know, what do you want? He said, oh, just do something. I thought, it was great. Just do something. Uh, anyway, so... There's a bit right at the beginning, it says, Iris is singing quietly to herself outside a nunnery whilst, I don't know, taking dew drops off cabbages or something. You know, that was the bit. And I don't know why. I think because I don't think, I just do, which gets me into a lot of trouble. Um, but I just suddenly thought, Iris, from what I gathered, so instead of singing quietly to myself, I went down, 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 down. And Iris went from there, really. Um, and uh, so, but it's lovely. I adore her. She was lovely to work with. And it was very early days with Iris. But I think that set her right up, you know, from there on. We knew who Iris was, I think, you know. And then you get her with Colin Baker, which is another story altogether, isn't it? <laughs> Did you have a question? Yes, sir. Which was your favourite master to work with? Ooh. Look into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am... Um, hello. Um, <laughs> I think it has to be Roger Delgado. I love Missy, by the way. I, you know, I, I just love her. Um, really messing with you, aren't I? Um, <laughs> Roger Delgado, because this man was such an extraordinary actor, and he played. He was the sweetest, most gentle, lovely man you could ever imagine. Um, who hated. Doing, he wouldn't do his own stunts. Hated violence. You know, we were in the Sea Devils when he had to go on the boat. He was so sick, and John and I were very naughty. We kept that fatty pork chopped. <laughs> 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 um, he was such a sweet guy, and we used to go. You know, we we, we were all friends. I was a doctor. You know, I went on holiday to Ibiza with John and his family, and we used to go to Rogers to dinner, um, and he. There was, and yet he made his living out of playing always these evil characters. But that man's eyes were so hypnotic that I almost went a few times. <laughs> you know, there's an actor sort of hit the time, and I'm like, you know, my eye, and I do anything you want. Yes, I do. You want me to pay for lunch? I'm there. It's okay, Roger. Um, but he also, what was like, can I explain something about acting? <laughs> no, maybe I shouldn't, because you'll say, when you learn, explain like, no. um, But <laughs> something about acting is that when you are playing, I play mass murderesses, and you know, I've played a lot of evil characters. Uh, the wonderful thing that you do, if I come up to you, for instance, and I just start shouting in your face and da 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 da. You're not going to feel that much fear. But if I walk up to you, <laughs> and I say, if you don't do what I request, I'm going to chop your thumbs off. <laughs> Are you scared? <laughs> So that's the difference. And with great respect to John Sim, who I think is a fabulous actor, I think it was a big mistake to have him shouting in nuts. Because who would be afraid of that? It was too manic. Uh, for my, that, that's just my, you know, once again, opinions aren't facts. And we all need to remember that in life. They are but opinions, you know. If someone says, oh, but this doctor was better than that, that's your opinion. Keep it. Anyway, so just the wonderful thing. He was such a gentleman. Oh, I do hope your coccyx are all right, Miss Brown. <laughs> and he and Joe actually had a really good relationship. 
he kind of respected her because she was tough stuff in her own little way. Yeah. So, yeah, right, I, I have to say, Roger Delgado and Missy, and of course now, we've got a new one who I think is rather good too. Yeah, Sasha. Uh, Sasha's, good. I, Sasha's love and a sweet man, because I work with his, what, his girlfriend, Ange, in uh, Sarah Jane Adventure. So, oh, it's a little world out there. <laughs> well, right, any other questions? Oh, you've got one now. I've threatened your life. <laughs> So they don't get chopped off. <laughs> actually, I read somewhere that actually John Pertwee didn't like the idea of Doctor Who recasting the Master. Um, but I know you can't believe everything you read. But, no, but, please but, all remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially when somebody has an opinion of us, don't believe it. It's their opinion. Um, no, he. Rather, I think the difficulty was. We were a very close team, and when Roger was killed, it was a huge shock. It was so unexpected. He hated being driven anywhere, and he was, you know, always liked to drive himself. And he was doing this film with Chuck, and uh, <laughs> he kept reminding us of Chuck. Um, and unfortunately, he accepted to be driven by a studio car. And it was such a shock to us as a close-knit family um, that, he, uh, that he was in a situation um, and that we were walk, driving along and we saw a sign that said, Doctor Who star killed. And I was with John and you kind of get this moment and you think, you know, your little heart stops and... And so we went and got the newspaper and we saw. And to be able to, to go back into rehearsals uh, and know that we were never going to see this wonderful friend uh, again, I think it was too early for John to be able to deal with. And I kind of agree. I think we needed to let it sit for a while, you know, to have that memory. And then it was, you know, and then of course you got Anthony Ailey. That's all I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> I listen, I, it's an opinion, um, and I only say it because I know, I, I don't know him, I never met him, I was living in Australia and met him, but what I did see, I think he was a little bit too moustache twirling. A little panto for me, compared to Roger, who was a completely, for me, quiet, credible character. That's, but it's an opinion, yeah. and you're all entitled to yours. Yes. I have mine. <laughs> can, we have, can we have Aaron up this side? He's had his hand up a few times. Who's who? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. hello. I held this little one when she was a baby. Oh. Um, I was wondering, with Sadie taking over and um, and Daisy taking over, how would you feel about someone else taking over Joe in, in the future? <laughs> John Culshaw, there's a job waiting for you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's a really good question, is it? Uh, it, it? You are suggesting then that I'm about to cark it. <laughs> you mean when I do cark it? What about pickles? Oh, yeah, hey, yeah, pickles. Because my beautiful twins, um, I think, learned a lot about theatre and therefore they're not in it. Um, <laughs> uh, but. You know, I, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, but it would have been lovely, yes, if, if she was old enough. I'll see if I can live as long as I can. <laughs> Another 20. Another 20? Oh, my God. I'll be coming back here, and you'll be saying, and what, I don't know, I just don't know anything. Um, <laughs> yes, darling. Oh. Oh. It's about, the box. <laughs> it's about the boxes, Katie. So you have been in Behind the Sofa for, of course, your own seasons, but you also have been in season 17 and 20. And you've got more to come, I'm afraid. <laughs> Would you consider being in like, Behind the Sofa for the other seasons that you won't do? No, I have been all the ones that I wasn't in. I mean, like, you know, like... I've done that Tom, and I've yeah. just done another one with... Uh, 
Oh no, I, 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 they actually request who they want. Oh. And I've been, no, I don't. I mean, that's how I first saw Tom. You know, not first, mm -hmm. but I hadn't seen all the stuff with um, uh, Lala. I'd never seen that show. Yeah. Um, I, and then I saw uh, uh, Janet mm -hmm. and Peter and Sarah and Matthew. Adric and yeah. Matthew. Who, Matthew and I are so naughty together on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you see what we're like behind the sofa. Um, <laughs> it's fascinating to me because I haven't seen all this stuff. And so, yes, I do keep going back, and it's great. So, no, that I don't want to do my own. Yeah, I mean, like... What do you want to do mine for? Like other seasons, you know, like season... Oh, no. Nah. It's someone <laughs> else to do that. Then they can say stuff, you know? Fair enough. You know, I can't Fair sit enough. there and watch myself. Fair enough. It's really tough. Fair enough. Because I can't change what it is. Uh, right. Last, last lady, question. La for lady now. in pink, oh, last question. We'll want to have a few more later. Does this look like my scarf, this carpet? Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I'll just lie down just for a minute so nobody will know I'm here. Oh, uh, we will. <laughs> hey, Candy. Just an um, easy question. What's your favourite moment with uh, John Pertwee? Like, your, your favourite mm -hmm. memory? Uh, so many. So, so many. Yeah. You know, so we were so close. We did everything together. We ate together. We traveled together. You know, it was extraordinary. I, you know, it was a wonderful relationship. And I don't get emotional a lot because I don't... But every now and again when I'm talking about somebody, I have, they, you know, you just, they're in your life. They're in my head every day. It's all right. And every now and again, I feel a sort of an emotion because, you know, he was my mentor. He was my champion. Um, and I think one of the silliest moments, right at the beginning, uh, and I did, you know, we did our own stunts in those days, basically, most of, because they didn't care if anything happened to us. <laughs> now you can't do anything. You can't even ride a horse now without breastplates and thingies, you know. And I'm not one of those. Anyway, so they taught me how to tuck roll out of a moving car, car going very slowly. And it was in the terror of the autons. So you do this thing. So instead of them, you be rolling into shot. So, you know, you just stood there and then you do a little roll and you roll into shot. They could actually get me falling out of the car and rolling, which is much more effective. <laughs> well, it was my first day. Why well, not? I can't see, who cares? Um, and he was wonderful because he always said, you know, I have to stand by the edge of that cliff because Katie can't see and she'll be over it. She'll just keep running. Uh, anyway, so he, you know, he really looked after me. Anyway, so I'm doing this thing. I tucked all out of the car. And the first time, and I pulled all the ligaments in my foot. But I wasn't going to tell anyone. So I very bravely limped back and they said, we'll just do that again. <laughs> okay. I'll do that again because I'm very new and I'm just going to do everything I'm told to do. So I do it again. Well, by this, the second time, you know, my boot is about to explode off. My, my leg is so strong. So they know they're going to have to take me to a, an A&E. So I'm putting this little room on location, somewhere probably in the, you know, the circus or everywhere. And Christopher Doyley John came in and he said, oh, well, okay, I'm so sorry, we, we, we're going to take you to the hospital, but I just want you to know, we've only got like a minute and a half of you on film. So, you know, we'll just have to let you go. <laughs> Can you imagine? The tears were not from pain. They were from, you know, can you imagine how I felt? This little person, my second job, I mean, you know. Anyway, I, tears are screaming. I don't care about my swollen eye. I don't care if they cut my boot off. I just don't care. And John, I didn't got myself that emotion. <laughs> I do it too easily, don't I? Anyway, so John came in and he said, what, why are you crying? And I said, because oh, that's it, it's over. And he said, what do you mean? I said, no, oh, Chris, I said, because I've only done a, a minute and a bit on filming, let you get somebody else. Well, my champion, 
turned around and took Christopher Doyle and John to the cleaners. <laughs> put his arms around me and said, no, darling, that's not what it's going to So that may be a very tiny, but that was right on my first day of filming that I realised I had my champion in life, you know, and for this show. And they were all, I mean, I just have to say, Nick caught me. What a beautiful, beautiful man. You know, a really, and, you know, Richard, I'm so, I go visit Richard. And, um, and, and John, um, Levine. Um, uh, anyway, it, who's, you know, who I've known for many, many years. Um, <laughs> um, so friendships will always be there, and I will always be there for anybody in the current, the past, whoever needs a little bit of support, I will always be there. Because it's, it, it's the whole thing as a family, and you're all part of it. Thank you. <laughs> This has been the Sirens of Audio episode 191. Katie Manning live Q&A in Sydney, October 2023, with our special thanks to Katie Manning, event organiser Philip Edney, panel host Dwayne Bunny, theme music by Joe Kramer. More about us at sirensofaudio.com. Comment below to give us your feedback or contact us via email at sirensofaudio at gmail.com or via any one of our socials using the at Audio Sirens handle. Thanks for listening, audiophiles. We'll hear you next time.